injector pump pulley support tool you see this got a lip on it this actually fits on the timing case assist you take the injector pump off without having to disturb the uh, timing belt basically there's two slots here and a hole for your timing pin and then corresponding to these slots there's two bolt holes in this pulley so basically this goes in the timing case front cover two bolts through and that supports this gear wheel leaves you free then to take your injector pump off timing gear is not disturbed I will add however you do have to remove the plate and the three bolts before you do this operation otherwise you might be struggling before removing the uh, fuel injection pump you're going to have to time the engine up and uh, this is used with the kit as well the kit has the full uh, Monty with it if you've uh, not seen the video on how to time the engine then click on this link that's shown on the screen now go to it and then come back to this tutorial and we'll carry on okay welcome back if you've just joined us again and uh, we're going to approach this by um, doing this job with the cover removed on the front of the timing case here and uh, we're going to time up the pump first so we got it spot on as uh, you can see as the other tutorial would have told you that you need to have this so the pump pin is sliding in and out this is accurately timed and this is where we're going to start from and this is how we're going to finish okay well we're going to have to remove some components first and uh, these will be the injector pipes I'm using a flare nut wrench here 11 sixteenths you can use a, an open-ended spanner if you like but I find this tool specifically uh, handy for this job all right a couple of things here um, make sure you protect your skin from diesel and um, you don't want to get dermatitis because diesel does cause skin problems right now with the injector pipes you have two sets and they're held together with idiot plates this will make sure that you don't get them around the wrong way and they're timed up properly like you would with uh, spark plugs or anything right keep these clean especially on these ends don't get any dirt into these because that will cause you big problems if you do so next thing to do is to remove the leak back and um, the boost pressure pipes okay and then at the front here we have the outlet union get your pipes out of the way okay I'm marking these so you can see what they are you also have the throttle cable to remove and disconnect the solenoid right so once you've done that you have uh, two bolts I'm marking them here you can see them clearly marked this bracket is um, held onto the pump with these allen keys and you don't need to remove these you can keep the bracket as is but you might need to fit it onto a new pump right so once we've done that we can then undo the screws which hold the locking plate on to the pulley the pump pulley that holds it onto the drive all right they're 10 mil sockets uh, that you can use on that and um, once you've taken that out you'll have to remember that when you take this plate out it will only go back on one way all right three bolts one plate so mark it if you need to and uh, fiddle it out this is a little bit fiddly but it won't drop into the timing case if you're careful with it all right so once that's done we're going to drop the support tool into place all right that fits in the timing case and we want to use the timing pin firstly as a reference all right two bolts they fit in these two holes here and they screw in so what I want you to remember at the moment is that they don't don't screw in tight just loosely because they're going to be butt up against the uh, pump drive okay now because it's still bolted to the flange onto the timing case we don't want to push it otherwise we'll cause damage what you'll find is there there is actually a locking peg on the side here of the pump you, what you have to do is undo it slip this plate out and then screw it up and that will lock the body the pumping body so it won't move if for any reason that you're taking it off and putting it back on just be aware that if you have done this that you have to put the plate back in to pull the the plunger away so after you know that little fact about the 200 TDI pump you can go ahead and uh, slip the plate out don't lose it because it is a precise measurement on the plate and then screw it up that will lock the pump up 
Of course, you need the timing pin. Yeah, so, with that bit of information, the pump's timed up, and there are three flange bolts which holds the pump onto the timing case of the rear. All right, you want to undo those. These are the three studs, and uh, they're 13 mil nuts. Um, they might be different depending on who's fitted the pump in the past. However, these need to come off. The top one, nearest to the engine block, is probably the worst to get off. With that done, you'll have to withdraw the timing pin as it will not fit um, through the support tool. Okay, now, nip in the bolts, and this is what I said earlier with um, not screwing them all the way in. What they'll do now is actually push the injection pump out and leave the pulley in place in the timing case with the belt attached and it will be fixed solid so as I'm winding it out you can see this it's pushing okay the studs are long enough for it not to actually drop off at this point you can see that all right so I'm nipping the studs up and you can see them at the back here that they go through far enough all right and this gives you now the opportunity to lift the pump off obviously you're going to be doing it from within the vehicle in most cases so there you have it you can see the drive right that is solid all right that's solid in there this is not this is without the support tool with it loose like this you have the chance of it actually slipping the belt and that will cause you problems and a lot more work difference between the 200 TDI pump which is here you have the pump locked and timed the 300 TDI you don't have this facility so what you'll have to do is retime it once it's been fitted back into the engine so with the pump out now we can either send off a reconditioning or fit a new pump or second hand whichever you have in mind now it comes to refitting the uh, fuel injection pump and it only goes on one way on these three uh, studs. The support tool and the bolts that are holding the uh, timing gear, you have to wind the support bolts out just slightly and push the pump in until it engages properly because you don't want to take the studs out, have the uh, gear wheel drop down and not be able to fit. So you fit all this into where you have to until it positively locks into place. So I'm going to leave the uh, torque settings for the nuts and the bolts on the screen here so you, uh, you know what you're tightening up and uh, you don't need to watch all of this. I'm also going to let you into a little sneak peek into actually what the workshop that I'm working in actually sounds like because I'm right next to the compressor. This being a heavy goods vehicle workshop is busy and uh, this is why I have to do voiceovers instead of directly talking to the microphone while I'm doing something. Okay, well you should be big enough to be able to do all the bolts up and put the bracket back in. And uh, I'm just fitting the pump locking plate, okay, the pulley locking plate in place just loosely. And then slipping the timing pin back in pump should be exact at this point still nothing should have moved at all and then uh, fitting this locking plate or should I say the the pin spacer back into place remembering that the 300 TDI is slightly different and it won't have this just remember to do this we don't want to cause any problems right so the 300 TDI you're going to have to bring it up because it's sprung at this point and it's on an injection point at 1.5 degrees at TDC it's um, we need to get it timed and then slip the pin in all right with the 200 TDI I'm actually going to check this again so it's absolutely perfect that the pin slips in and out I can then nip and torque these bolts up the uh, torque setting is on the screen here whoops this nut is actually screwed up so uh, a little bit of a problem there so we can go ahead and put the injector pipes on and uh, if you've seen any of my videos uh, previously you'll know that with these unions here the best thing to do is to use two spanners and uh, one's to hold the uh, valve and the other one is to do the nut up I'm sure I don't need to say this, but the injector unions you don't want to do up too tight at the moment because you'll be needing to bleed out the system. 
speed up the pump first and then once you've cracked tightened them up you'll be okay that this engine should run these uh, pumps are very good and they're self priming so these unions all right i have two in my hand and uh, this one here goes on the leak back it has a tiny pinhole and a filter in it this is important to remember you can get them around the wrong way and if you're in a dozy mood it probably will happen and it won't run whereas this one which is from the outlet of the filter as you noticed i said this earlier to the inlet of the pump we want to be fitting new copper washers on them and uh, fitting the pipe back all right so this is the outlet from the filter to the inlet of the pump I know some people are rather particular about the, the terminology but as long as you remember this it's quite important it's quite fiddly actually to, to do this job to get it started um, and it needs to be clean around this area there should be no ingress of dirt whatsoever all right so you need to wash the engine if, before you um, start stripping it I'm not going to nip this um, union up tight at the moment because what we need to do is bleed the piping through to the pump first um, via the um, hand lever once this is uh, bled up to this point and there's air out of this pipe we can then go ahead and uh, nip it up and you probably notice that there are actually two different sizes that are seen on this video for the banjo unions on these engines and they do differ this is why I'm not going to give you the spanner sizes okay so the rear banjo remembering this is the one with the filter and the uh, the pinhole uh, no special treatment it is a bit fiddly, fiddly to get into uh, the back of the pump and uh, I'd advise leaving the throttle cable off until you've actually uh, fitted this however there's no special treatment just be aware that if you still have this old plastic piping it might have split when you were disassembling so um, you've got to keep an eye on that it might leak but yeah you just snip this up and away you go what I would like to say that I do actually uh, change filters when I'm doing something like a, a pump change it only makes sense um, just remember the quickest way to do this is to prime the filter up first and then that saves you a lot of arm ache um, priming the pump alright just crank it over these uh, Bosch VE um, fuel injection pumps are brilliant for uh, bleeding once you've got diesel up to the uh, pump from the outlet of the filter okay you're going to find that all you'll need to do is crank the engine over prime the pump and then the fuel will come up to the injectors remember you'll need a good charge battery before you do this as uh, some experienced people know and then you're looking for diesel that froths up at the injector pipes you left the unions undone and uh, that will come up to that point once you've got diesel there you can then crack your injectors tight okay you don't nip them down too hard but you nip them up and then your engine should run after them okay well i hope this has been entertaining and uh, informative stay tuned to uh, trailer fitters toolbox for more diesel fitting and engine rebuilds